I have here in my hands, in this nondescript white box, an early engineering sample from Razer that could very well change the pro gaming scene. This is a mouse with an 8000 Hz polling rate, which sadly isn't over 9000, but it's a damn sight higher than the 1000 that all of the current mice have. So let's just take a look at it, let's have a play with it and see what this 8000 Hz fuss is all about. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So let's unbox this puppy. Now, it, like I said, is kind of a, a nondescript white box. It's also very fancy. It folds out nicely to reveal a brown cardboard box. Yeah, it's, it's not very fancy. But when you take that out, you'll find the mouse. Now, this is basically a modified Razer Viper. It has a code name on the bottom, but it's essentially their standard Razer Viper with their standard uh, optical switches that we'll talk more about in a second. But the key thing is that it uses a new controller. That's the thing that allows the 8000 Hz pull rate, which is something that we haven't seen before. But actually, let's take a step back for a second and explain what the hell it is I'm even talking about. What is a, a pull rate? Well, back when mice still had balls in them, uh, they all used a PS2 port, the round one with the different uh, pins that was always a pain to plug in, and that used a very different style of um, well, operation. Especially for keyboards, uh, what happened was when you pressed a key, that would send an interrupt signal to your CPU that would halt its operation entirely, process the key press, and then carry on doing whatever it needed to do. When we switched over to USB, that paradigm flipped. Now the CPU, or realistically the USB controller, was the one asking the peripheral for whatever new information it had, and it asks at a given frequency. The highest that we've seen before, at least truly seen before, is a thousand hertz, which means that every millisecond, the USB controller is asking the mouse or the keyboard if it's got any new data that it needs to process. What that means is when you click your mouse, especially to say fire a gun in game, what's happening is the mouse controller is registering that key press, but it has to wait for the USB controller to ask it for new information again. And so it has to store that key press in the controller until it's allowed to send it out. Now, like I said, because we've all been using the fairly standard controllers in our peripherals like mice and keyboards, we've all been using a maximum of a thousand hertz. But Razer wasn't satisfied and so made this, which has a controller that's a lot faster and so can now run 8000 instead. But why should you care? What, what benefits does that have? Well, there's actually a couple. The obvious one is that the more times you can tell the, the USB controller and therefore your PC what position the mouse is in, the more accurate the, the data, especially from the sensor, is going to be for smooth tracking, especially in FPS games. Now there is a bit of argument, especially over 500 hertz versus 1000, and some people say that 1000 hertz doesn't really matter, and therefore uh, 500 hertz is, is a better place to be because you're sort of diminishing returns, and therefore 8000 would be very much diminishing returns, but the argument is that 8000 hertz will then give you a level of consistency that 500 hertz wouldn't. Either way, this is mostly relegated to the, the real pro gaming scene. I don't expect that many people will see a, a benefit of using an 8000 hertz mouse if they aren't, you know, CSGO champions or whatever else. Although, you know, who am I to judge if you fancy having the best of the best, right? Now, there is another benefit that you might not have thought about, and that's input lag. Now, input lag is something I'm pretty well versed in testing, and essentially it is the time from you doing an action, say, left-clicking a mouse to fire a gun, and having that action be displayed on screen. The lower that time can be, the better of an experience you will have, because things will be more reactive, things will be able to, you'll be able to fire your gun a few milliseconds faster than your opponent, and that can be the difference between getting the headshot and getting absolutely pwned and losing. With mechanical switches, mice in particular, including the fancy Omron ones that you can hot swap in and out of mice, those have to do something called debouncing. 
Basically what happens when you left or right click is the uh, there's a springy piece of metal that drops down onto a contact patch and when it makes contact that completes the circuit and registers a key press with the mouse. The problem though is that, well, it bounces, quite literally. When you go to click, it will literally bounce up and down on the surface and can even bounce up and down on the way back up. And so you have to do a thing called debouncing. What ends up happening there is that the controller has to normally wait a clock cycle or two before registering that key press to make sure that it is actually all the way down. That is a legitimate key press that you want to have happen. Uh, so that it doesn't accidentally fire two or three by accident. Now because it has to wait around for a couple of clock cycles before it can register that key press, at a thousand hertz, a couple of clock cycles means you're waiting for around two milliseconds. Now that doesn't sound like much, but considering that people spend a lot of money on displays that have a couple of milliseconds less input lag, and a couple of milliseconds can be the difference between you hitting your headshot and getting owned, it can make sense for why you would want this lower latency. So in comes Razer with their optical switches. Basically what they do is have a beam of infrared light that is normally broken by a piece of plastic, and when you press down on the switch, you move that piece of plastic out of the way so that the beam can connect to the sensor on the other side, and that connects a signal and you know, registers a key press. All that means you can register a key press in just 0.2 milliseconds, which is a lot, lot faster, and you don't have to do any debouncing. What that means is that when you couple it with the 8000 Hertz controller, you can register clicks in 125 to 250 microseconds, or 0.125 milliseconds to 0.25, uh, which is incredibly, incredibly fast. So that's enough of the theory. Let's go and set this up and play some games and just see what it's like. So I've been playing with this for a little bit and I have a few, uh, not really conclusions as much as observations. It does feel faster to click. It feels more responsive um, when you, especially left click to fire guns and stuff. It does feel a little faster, although that could just be placebo because I know that it should be faster, at least in theory. Um, it also, my, my aim performance does feel a little bit better with this. Um, that's not saying much in CSGO or just actually in general, my aim isn't um, fantastic, but you know, I wouldn't always hit that shot, but I did. So yeah. Um, but the other thing is that it also feels fairly jittery. Uh, I don't know whether it's the lift off distance or what, but um, it, it does feel fairly jittery, which I think you'd probably have to get used to on top of um, the, the faster you know input lag and um, refresh rate kind of thing. So yeah, it's a bit of an interesting one. I'm not a professional esports player, and so I'm not necessarily the best person to tell you the, the gaming performance. I can tell you the theory, uh, which I hopefully already have, but yeah, it, it feels like a good experience. It feels a little bit better. Um, there's no way I don't die here, um, but yeah, uh, I'll wait for some esports pros to tell me that it's better, and that will be... Um, you know, oh, come on. Good result for me. Hey, hit some people. That's unusual. <laughs> I know they're bots, but like, still. So that's pretty much it for this video. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of Razer's 8000 Hertz? Do you think it's a bit of a gimmick? Do you care for the input lag deduction or do you care about the extra smoothness that you might get from it? Or would you say this is for esports professionals only? Anything at all, do let me know in those comments down below. Now, I don't really have much of a way of, of selling you one of these. They're not available just yet, but feel free to check out Razer's website if you want to learn more. I assume they'll have a press release up. Uh, and otherwise, there is a load of other links in the description you can check out. There's stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one if you want some cool t-shirt designs, or there's a load of other stuff like affiliate links to people like Overclock UK, there's VPN options, Hubble Bundle if you want cheap games, or Streamlabs OBS's Prime subscription if you want to check that out if you stream a lot. And I'll leave some other videos over there for you to check out. Um, there's not really any immediately relevant. Maybe I'll leave the Tech Explained playlist if you're interested in seeing me explain other tech well, stuff. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all in the next one.